Okay, so there's some, some horrible crap in there. So it's always good to set up your hoover if you can, because you're sort of throwing it back into your face. Right. Right, well, you know, let's tap out that that old washer. Yeah, this, this is already starting to crease there. The other side with a bit of a grinding stone there. There's a fair amount of rust in it and pitting. This seems to be a lot, a lot better. I'll just try it, lost it up there anyway. Rather than damage it, if we do think it's a little bit tight, all we'll do is we'll just take a little skim off. You'll know if it's fighting you like going in. Well, it's happening there, it's actually closing in on itself, that's not good. No. Oh, yeah, that's going to tap in, I get past the camera and tap it in. We all prefer not to have to go grinding, obviously, but to avoid damage in the bloody thing, I'll do it. Yeah. I leave them sitting out, as I said, same glass, I never said. I leave them sitting out proud. So they go further up on the, on the shaft. Not too much, that's going to go rubbing any parts, but. Uh, just a little bit. Now this this one's in really good nick. So I'm looking forward to going a little bit more. And look, there's no precision engineering needed here. Feel with your finger there. And it's roughly. It's roughly yeah, level, like you know, it's not as if it's gonna be turning at four thousand grams per minute. Okay. So I'm happy with that. And while I'm here, I may as well just fork some of that grease. There's actually plenty of kind of old grease in, kind of oily kind of grease, like clean grease. So I'm happy enough. Oh, that'll do the finish. The solid finish. So that'll crown it. Okay, so that's done. So whenever we, uh, whenever we want to, I often. We use these holes there, just two of them for the original battery tray holder. I re tapped them there and just cleaned them out, and I run the, the wire for the light down there. I, don't know, I think it looks neater instead of having it. So I'll just take a look and see can we do we should be able to do that. They're coming there. I might be able to put on a little bolt in each one of them and a bit of a bracket. And reroute them, but we'll see. Like that's not really Im important. It's just that they are sitting around there. And I would prefer to have them personally underneath. Yeah, so we can pull them there, pull them apart, and run them down under there. That'd be it'd be an improvement. So what? So I'll just lift up the camera and see if we can do something with that. So after looking into it more. These two wires are actually joined in through the connectors. So I'll have to cut them and I will re route them underneath them in the end. No big panic. We can do that and get them out of here where lift arms are going up and batteries are moving and all of that. Run them underneath and uh, let's look. You won't see them. 
Okay, so I'm just going to do a little bit of looking here at this. I'm going to clean it up. Let's get some paper. Gasket there as well. Scratch him off. Mm -hmm. The drain the wire bush will do the rest of it. Clean up where the seal has to go. Right, so get a little bit of paper and we'll block up that. We'll get the drill. We'll get it clean up. Okay, sure there's no gouges on that now at all. All that whole grease over. Probably never going to move anyway, even when you do grease it, but oh, as well. And I like to go around a little bit on the outside as well, just to make sure there's no gouges. People are sticking in levers and stuff. Okay, so that's good enough. Ready for a bit of sandpaper. Flatten it a bit. And the sandpaper on the old breadboard that wasn't being used. Okay. 
So that's good. That's ready for a new seal. Brilliant. Okay, let's pull out that paper. And get a new seal in there. Okay. Let's feel around. Any birds? Yeah, there's a bird there. I have to get him over. Otherwise, you make shit of it. Will it be enough to cause issue? I'll try and catch with my fingernail. I have to do a bit more work on him, I think. I have to get the. Yeah, I'm just going to get the Dremel and grind him over. It's always worth running the finger in around and just see. It's that would definitely now could easily have caused the issue. Get the seal going in. Three birds on it. They're bloody boring. Coming out the wrong tip. Yeah, it's not a chance that. If it's sticking out a couple of towels, like it, it just, it'll, uh, there's a good chance it can. It could uh, cause that out. Seal to the side all of a sudden that it doesn't want to fucking go in. Okay. No way the sound of it when it's home. You get that metallic ring on it. That's lovely. <coughs> One thing I do is I just get the mirror and the pump, just make sure that's on in. Nice and level. Probably a bit over top of this step, but it's just easier than baiting for no reason. It's definitely there, so that's good. And now, before we forget, not that I would because, well, there's going to be grease on the end of the half shaft anyway. Just put a nice helping of that there. And run it right through the other side there as well. Okay, that is one half shaft ready to go. 
new seal, new bushing for the brake rod. Okay, lovely. We'll go working on the half shaft now and take out. We have uh, a few uh, three then. I'll take out, leave one in and I'll put the other one across from it. Two's enough. And uh, I'll clean up. Uh, we have to get nuts for them. I think them nuts were destroyed, I think, if I'm not mistaken. So I wanted to do a little job. The, the wires for the lights were running across here and they were connected there. <coughs> and they were kind of getting caught up in this. So what I've done was I started running them. We tied it, I just decided to tidy up just there. So we're running them down here. I'm going to tap. This is for the original battery tray. I had another little bit of metal under there come, attached in there. There's a space underneath the drawbar there. That's So I may, I'm going to run them up through there. That's the start and handle bracket. I can cable tie it to that. That'll be back up there. I can cable tie it to that. I'm trying to keep everything out of the way of brake rods and any, anything like that that might scratch the wire or damage the wire and cause an earth. So the plan is to get it's sitting in behind nice and snugly in, a, in there, out of the way. Put a bolt in there with a little bracket on it to take the wire, channel it down in there and keep it clear of all of that. That's one option I have. <coughs> and I'm doing the same this side here, you can see the wire. So I have some bolts here, nice dinky little bolts there. And I just ran the tap over them, 7 16 UNF tread. So the plan now is just to run the tap in these holes there. So <coughs> it could be a little bit awkward with that brake rod there. It's definitely the time to do it for the other side because of the brake rod out. Yeah, so that's not going to work there. So we'll just have to get a fire or something for that and uh, try it. <coughs> We will go for the inside one anyway. I don't know, is this going to work or not? A little bit tight coming in at it from this angle. I don't want to get under it and have that stuff going into my eyes. Is that much paint in there at the moment? <coughs> I'm gonna have to try and scratch a bit of that paint off. And probably rust but anyway I'm gonna to have to get in here so we're gonna to have to go moving this back so I don't know if you're gonna be able to see a whole lot when I get in there but we'll try <coughs> lots of stuff in there this is the tap for cleaning like it's not the one for cutting so we would hope it would go in Unless they try a smaller one, but then it, I don't know, it's not going to work then with the, with the bolt. It's meant to go in there. The top ones are completely plumped. Looks like the stud sheared off. Probably should I definitely should have done this with the brake rod off, but sure look, you don't think it even. That is fairly well clogged up now, so it's that's interesting now. We'll have probably have to clean it out with a drill bit, I'd say. Yeah. So I'll go and get a drill bit. If I can get a drill bit in, I'd able to get a drill bit in. Probably won't. Maybe it was that one. Yeah, I'll have a go and see and clean it out. Right, so we'll give it a go. I know you can't see a whole lot there, but you get the idea. Can't get in at that one. Very, very straight at all. But still, it should be biting. A bit awkward now, right? Having that brake rod in, I should have really done this now. No, no, no. Get a spanner on that as well. Right, I'll get a spanner and try. Right, so just put you up a little higher. The whole lot could fall very, very easily now. I'll try not to hit with the shoulder. Good chance 
just won't bite. I'll be too, I'll be too far gone. Reel off and break rod off. That was the time to do this. I feel like it's getting a bite on it, I thought. Ah, it's ideal now. I need to be able to come at this straight. Not that scow line, down the line. I don't know what that biting is of. No, it's not biting. That's a pity. That would have been an ideal place now to kind of put in a bracket. That's complete arse in there, and I'll try to get in there. I'll just get the other one and try the other um, top for actually cutting, because this is for cleaning and it's probably just not biting at all. It was my mistake, I actually had the wrong, wrong top there. Funny. I went, it's too big, this is the right one here, so this is the one for cleaning out. I ran it in there fairly well, so that seems to be doing something here's the one for cutting so we'll see does this go in and well, look we could be wasting our time here as well but we'll see it's worth a try just next time for the other side at least i don't have my anything in the way of course these are really are for suffering now with rust whatever i put in is probably going to be loose but again it's it's only going to be holding the bracket with a wire on it, like so. It's just a scrape for pulling the wires out of the way and keeping them safe. Now, at the same time, this could be the back on. Keep back on, which will be challenged. That's all we can do. I get a bolt and suit that. Okay, I'll get a bolt and come back and see if they'll go in. One little bit of uh, <laughs> a bracket. And a plasticky rubber sure look when chance it like. So didn't have anything big enough there. And the proper ones for it, so we chance this. That'll do the trick, and I can make another one then, if needs be. <clears throat> so, this is one of those jobs when it works out, it's grand and tidy. When it doesn't, it's a pain in the arse. Just keeps the wires out of the way of everything, and hanging down. And Getting caught in something in the field, like branches out of a tree or a tree on the ground, or long grass or whatever. There you go, that'll do it. It's neat and it, it repurposes them, you know, these two holes. It repurposes them. It's tidy, it's safe. Beautiful, okay. So that means we can now run our wire through there, like so, and it just kind of keeps it out of the way of everything. And we can join them all out of there. So we've got to we've got to bear these anyway. That's what we do have to do. So we'll give them a quick strip in. Be a little bit minimalist on this i don't want to go cutting the actual cord wire so there we go so 
So that's that side ready to go. And what I will do is I'll have another look for, I'll make up another strap and we'll put it in the, the one beside it as well, like so. We'll actually end up having two. One and another one there, like I did in the 35 X that I was working on as well. You know, it's just a little bit tidy. And I said it just repurposes the hole, so. Maybe I'll go now and just see if I have I'll see the bolts here beside me. See if Lannigan is looking like it might be willing to take up that position. I haven't even ran the tread in that one because I can't get into it really, but let's see if this will. It's an awful, an awful pity I didn't do that now when I was. Uh, I had the space for it, getting straight in at it. I'm sure you live and you learn. We still, we should be able to work it. Probably just too dirty you now to take it about at the moment. I probably need a bit of cleaning out. The Dremel might be the man actually, maybe not though. Might even get a Dremel into it. Well look, for the time being anyway, that's not going to stop us from doing our bit of tidying up underneath here. So we'll do that bit of tidying and we'll come back. There's another one made up. <laughs> Gas looking thing, but sure look, I want to do the trick and it won't rush. So, found another bolt. It seems to be biting. Biting. Biting rush. This is just a little thing I do. I think it's biting. It was biting a minute ago. Strange things can happen when you press the corner. No? <coughs> yeah, she's biting. She's biting. I think, I think she's biting. Just can't get in there to clean it. Cap isn't long enough, that bloody brake rod's in the way. But I think that will hold what we need it to hold. I think that'll do the trick. Definitely looks a little bit tidier there now anyway. Yeah, I think that's going to do the trick nicely. Keep everything out of the way, things we don't want to go near. And we have our other two bits of wires there sticking out. So we'll be able to do a little joiner up there. <coughs> so they're coming in here. Right, so we can join them. There and there. Join them, cut this. Won't need to be that long. I'll pull them up under there. Cable tie around the foot peg here, nice and neat. Keep all that up under there, but we don't want to see it. That's my little plan there now, plan of action. But then again, I'm pulling them tight. And if I go and put a bolt into here, are we going to go? No, we shouldn't. I might just get one in this side, which I don't mind because you can't see that hole because of the battery tray. So if I just put one in there and a little bracket on it, it means that we're going to be well clear of all the things we want to steer clear of. And then we can, if we have to, we can loosen that bolt there and pull that in there a little bit tighter, a little bit neater. But I think we're, we're going to win there anyway. So. At least this side I can get the get the, the tap into. So I made up another little one. Okay. <coughs> I'm not telling you where this came from because it's going to sound extremely stupid. It's top secret. There is one of my crocs in there. It did fall off that. So 
and it's repurposing at its finest. So this bolt is a little bit shorter. Well, probably not long enough now to get a grit. So what we might do is get our wire in there first because it could be hard to push it through. I might have to get a longer one. It's just a nice neat looking job. And it's hard to push the bolt in, as you can imagine, because it's just going straight into that. Yeah, so that's tricky. <laughs> just a little bit too, too short. Right, we'll grab another one. So, okay, take two. Kind of a strange rubbery plastic, that's what it shouldn't degrade over time and all of that. So we'll just see does that bite. See if we can it's long enough for us to push it in. Oh yeah, it's flying in. So we'll pull back the wire, push it through. behind there and push it under the drawbar I can angle it a bit there if we want and give them a little bit more of a lip oh there we go I don't know about you know but I think that's the solid fine it's not going to be seen of course and we can cable tie that one then behind there out of the way or we can let it run up there and it'll actually naturally sit on top of that will it is that bent out a bit yeah it's not getting in the way the pto lever i think that's it i'm happy with that now brass off the machine job being built that's the machine Okay, so we were working a little bit on some wire in there just to make it a little more neater and to keep it out of the way of everything there. So we rooted it down out of the way through that. We repurposed that uh, battery tray bolt down there, the bolt hole. Uh, there would have been originally two batteries on this, two six volts joined in uh, series to make 12 volt. So no need for that anymore. So these usually are. You know, I can see here the studs are sheared off or they're filled to weld one or the other and these were open so we then used for that bracket. So I'm after putting it down underneath there, there's a gap there on the, just between the, the draw bar, which is an original part, pickup hitch, and uh, put them under there and we cable tied them the other side out of the way. So I just tested them and it does do seem to be working anyway so happy days just to make it things a little bit more tidier so what i'm going to do now is return to this half shaft we have to take out um one of these uh studs leave in two and we're gonna have to fix oh yes this one here had to be cut off yeah that one had to be that was the one that had to be cut off i've never seen a nut as bad on that one of these before my life so that's going to have to come out we're going to take out one of them maybe put it across from each other to help us line things up when we're putting them back together we have to clean out the bearing it does look lovely but we'll get that old grease out of it there and we have to match up i think two nuts because two of them were, were too bad to use and of course that one was cut off so we'll clear the workbench get that baby up on it and start baiting into it this baby has to come out by hell or high water I'm sure as hell isn't going to do any good there anyway. We'll take him out as well. We'll put the other one across. There, so. When we take them out, we'll give this all a bit of a clean up. Make sure it's okay. Make sure there's no burrs in it, because they actually are. Someone was doing a bit of a uh, levering at some point there. You can just see the cleaner metal and it started gathering up a big lump of metal there. Small bit. So we'll put a bit of a chamfer on that. There's only going to be grease in there because it's only there's a new seal fitted, so we don't have to be 
um, getting any leads or precision engineer involved here. So we put on the, the good old vice grips and hope that that gets enough grip on it. And put a bar through there. What way do do that? And there we go. It's starting to go there. There we are. She gave up. Handy enough. Same for the nut as on it was the worst one I've ever seen, but sure look. That's all in the past now. We're moving forward. Yeah. Okay, the treads are treads are good anyway at least, so we know that much, so we need to get one of them that's no bother but when, before we do that we'll just take out this lad here as well may as well put these right across from each other just makes things easier for lining it up not the most important thing that you're going to do with one of these but i always say if you put in the work prep work we'll thank you for it Have to go loosen fingers. There we go. Any marks on that from the vice grip? So we simply give him a rub of the file. And we're going to do him a rub of the file anyway because he's a little bit pitted, I think. So we'll grab him in the vice. We'll clean up those treads as well because they are a little bit dirty looking. There we'll get, uh, we'll get a nut moving nice and free and that that's one nut what we still have i'm happy with him i'll use him again i might have to cut those treads it's no bother i have the vice have the tap there for that the die i should say that's what the, they're called so we'll just have a look at it straight away and uh, there's no very easy way of gripping this without grabbing treads so Hold it in here neat enough that the wire brush won't uh, pick up the, the rag. Okay. So step one. Clean everything down. We can see then what state everything is in and uh, go from there. I think I might have to hit him with the, the die. I think he's half inch. That's our biggest one there. No, that's too big, which is good. It means we definitely have the one for seven sixteenths UNF. It's a little bit worn. The first few treads. So we'll have to try and tread it on and tread it back. Yeah, just a little bit chewed up. Whatever happened. That's all it took. 
thing of beauty. Look at that. Best money you'll ever spend. Gips at the taps and the die if ever needed. Okay, so we are one, two nuts short. So I'm going to go and get two cylinder head nuts. My own trick. Uh, they're always in good nick. And we'll get them there. Onto there. We'll see if we need any spring washers. We'll bring the spring washers as well. Let's see. We'll definitely one or two short. So we'll bring them. Okay, so I have a spare stud. So that's good. So we need to match him up with the nut. My okay, treads are a little, little bit, as you can see there. So we'll get him onto the, the die on him. There's our nut there, cylinder head one. Always in great nick, usually always in oil, you see. This is a bit thicker as well, so good and strong. So look at that, straight on, thing of beauty. So we have a spare spring washer as well from the power spin. So that's perfect. So that's that stud is going to go in, because we've got done. And these treads should go straight in. So what I'll do is just to be just to do the right thing, I'll just give it a quick clean up with the, with the drill now. So we'll put on our nut. Our nut. May as well do this. Just makes such a difference when you have uh, something cleaned up like that. Okay, so we're ready for that. And then we can bring our half cart over. We're going to go across from this lad here, so we'll bring it. 12 o'clock, so we'll go 6 o'clock there. We'll screw him in. So he's got to go in. Now, it's more than one way of skinning a cat, as they say. So. We can do this the least destructive way if we want as well. The only thing is this it involves having this nut go down very, very easy. And it's not really it's just get enough tread. And of course I have a thinner one there, so I should really be using that. And use the two nut trick to get this out, get this bolted in place. Anyway, screwing things on and off is no harm anyway, it's just going to free up the, the treads. I just want to expose a bit of tread there. Okay, expose a bit. And use the other then nut to screw it on top of that and we'll screw the whole lot. the top nut then to butt up against that hopefully screw in the stud. Oh. Yeah. That's the least destructive way to do it. Instead of grabbing it with vice grips and even marks on it. It all does, if you do that with every one of them, you'll end up making it harder to get everything fit together. At least on the Ferguson 20, there's only six of these on the 35s. Massey 35 is 12 of them. There's nearly two evenings of work doing both sides. Just cleaning up these. Oh, 
Okay, so that's tightened down. That should screw off and it'll pull it up the side. That's good. The last thing you do is leave that spring washer on. Or here. You just leave it on there. Forget about it. Now, I'm going to get some paper. Let's clean up some of that. All grease from there. Not too bad at all. See a nice clean bear and bear look. Okay, that's that. Now, one thing I should have done before I put in that stud was just give this whole thing a clean up, whole flange clean up. Stuff that down there now, stop any dirt going in. Won't be much. It's wet as well, so. Probably as I should have did this before I fitted the uh, stud. said there was a bit of burn on this so we'll try and find that again there there she is there let's see it there now yeah okay so we'll just hit it with the file because as it normally it can all make a difference getting that off Right, there's a lump on it there. Little chamfer on it, no harm. Okay, it doesn't take much to take it out. So it's important to clean all these down. If you run it all the way around, it's not going to make a difference. Field in for any high spots. Little high spot there. It's 
something that in there. Jeez, plenty here as well. Lever them apart is not the right thing to do. Your plastic or rubber mallet is enough. Or your lump hammer with a bit of timber. Hit the back and plate. And you get the leverage from hitting that to get this moving. Putting in levers and all of that is not ideal. Some serious damage done to this. Well, not serious, but un needless. A lot of unneedless damage. But it's easy to get out, just as long as it's just important you notice it, that's all. And this to sit as true and as flat as possible. This is a barren outer wraith, well, it's, it's a barren holder, like, retainer. Okay, so it's going to put pressure on the barren, so we want to put the most even pressure as possible on it. Right, so that's that, right, small job, but still important we notice these things. Okay, there's our nice head bolts. That's head nut, that's gonna go on there, lovely. Other side here. How's that fixed? That's beautiful as well. That's that's looking good. So we're improving this. Now we have to fit. We don't have to fit this actually at all, or do we? Are we better off fitting it? We are better off fitting it, I think. Okay, so we'll just put it in one of these here, wherever it wants to go in nice and easy. The side you put in is the shorter treads, because it only has to go in there, the other one has to hold the, uh, the casting. To go through the, the trumpet. Okay, so we'll just pick a hole here, and uh, tread it down into it. That's treading in beautifully. I must have did a bit of work on this one before. Beautiful, beautiful. I'll grab him softly now and just get a feel. He'll just bottom out then very quickly. There you go. That's him. Okay. Lovely. So that's that. Take out our paper. Oh, it was a good bit of damage on it, all right, yeah. It's gone out of it now, anyway. But there's a diesel on that, that's no harm. Okay, so that's three. One, two, and three. So that's okay. And that should go on to any of them, really, without much issue. Okay, so that's what we're going to use there. This side here, we're just going to give these studs a clean up in the vice. Some of them have already got a clean up. Yeah, that got its clean up and it's fine as well. So there's only one to do there. And then we have some spring washers, one, two, three. We should have that, that, that. We need one more spring washer. So that's okay. We don't. I have one. One stud to clean up in the drill, and we can grease up our bear in there. It's not the best. Not that I've seen, but I'll put it somewhere 
it's not going to take much pressure like i won't put it on the top or bottom put it on the sides the rest of them came off fairly well i don't want to go cleaning them up too much because i want whatever bit of paint is on them whatever bit of rust is on them to nearly help grab the the socket as strange as that sounds but trust me <laughs> i know what i'm doing i think i do anyway so bit of new grease in there there and fields a1 and burnished it so we'll do a bit of that now and then of course this is a grease level so it can be uh we'll fire in another bit with the gun afterwards and then we'll tell the owner then to try every now and again to fire in some grease into it plenty plenty is the rule it's the cheapest maintenance work it down with the finger lift it up give it a twist and push it down more then when you lift it up when you get head into them rollers Lovely, that's working down lovely in there. And of course we grease up where that seal's going there. I give that a clean up already off camera with some scotch right. That kind of green scouring kind of pad. It's ideal for that. It doesn't leave scratches on it, it just gives it a little polishing up. have grease on the seal as well the half shaft seal okay so whatever's on the hands can go on there to do with no arm at all lovely half shaft so we have to then jack up other side of the track to take off the wheel and do a test on the end load there's all the nuts and bolts there's a half shaft now let's put the brake back in the plate One, two, three, stud sticking through. We have our seal in, our new seal in. It's greased up. This is the fun bit now. Bit of man handling involved. Our new gushing for that in there. Side brake is freed. Okay, first thing to do. You can get help with this, it's always better. To push your half shaft through the seal nice and easy and straight as possible. Don't want to go down to that. I try and lift the hoe into the diff. Okay, maybe that's not going to work because we have that thing is on backwards there, but quickly we fitted it up. Up she comes. This is where you can do with help. This brake rod likes to fall. Use that to kind of. Okay. Push against the spring. The spring pushes that back in. That went together fairly handy, and you know why that went together fairly handy is we just put in the bit of groundwork there, getting all them studs cleaned up. So that's in the right place there, it's not in the wrong hole, there's only six of them, if it was wrong it would be very obvious. Okay, our grease nipple was out, so we know it's working. So the first thing I like to do is sit on the arse, save the back. So whenever studs are sticking through, put on a nut, spring washer, if they're sticking through enough, if not, leave the spring washer off. 
trying to get two on, so you can pull them fairly, pull it fairly level. Okay, so we go to this one down here. Nice. I know I'm a big fan of those cylinder head nuts. I think a full ring of them really does make it look a lot better instead of rusted, corroded. Give it a few turns. Go back to the first one. Give it a few turns. Yeah, just pulling it in nice and evenly. Otherwise, it kind of wedges. There's another nut there, ready to go on. I tell you the difference it makes. You have all your threads sort. So we put back in the shim as well. There. No gasket needed on this. Saves messing with 16, 17 mil metric sockets and baiting them on to try and get a grip. Lovely to have your 11, 16 standard socket on and be able to work straight away. Tighten the nerf nut. Make some difference. Did do I shouldn't do it's just you can nip one or two of them up a little bit too much you know you're better off just getting them all in and treading first at least because you can end up the, the last one being a little bit hard to go in but we'll see if that happens might have happened so Do a few of these are tight, and we'll have a feel, make sure everything's turned <coughs> free. The last thing you want is to feel it jamming up. Then we'll do <coughs> take off the wheel, the other side, and do our test and make sure. And you turn one, turn this half shaft one way, the other one turns the other way. That one's after skinning about three knuckles, but your luck. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. That feels nice. Feel like it's shimmed up lovely. And in fairness, I did all I did think it was shimmed up lovely now as soon as I laid the hand on it. Okay. So one thing we do have to do is just tap in a little bit.
Okay. That's looking good. Nice and greased. There's a tension of spring in the bit now as well. There we go. Lovely. That's looking good. Right. That feels really good. But we won't know until we take off the wheel the other side, so that's when we know we'll have to put another shim or two. So, as much as I thought that felt nice, I did feel think that it felt a little bit on the tight side. <coughs> so when I do a test, it shouldn't turn the same way as I'm turning. And it is. The reason why that's happening is I took out gasket each side, I have to clean it back, and I have no choice. So what I have to do is take that out again and put in the, sh the shim, excuse, have, excuse me, the hiccups. So I'd have to put in a tin shim and try it again. So I'm going to take that out, I'm going to put in a shim and I'm going to come back when I'm ready to test it again. Right, so I've hit it, put out the towel on, right, another five towel, or four towel to, if I have to put it on. We did take the gas, the gas put off both, both sides. But I want this to be as snug as possible. Shim is nice, and full white. Okay. I was going to come back when it was all done, but that, that would be done. You want to see these screws when we make any part? Yeah, yeah. Handy in past the seal. No, we don't really have to worry about the brake back and plate. Break rock going in. We can do that after. So I'm just going to quickly do that up and we'll do the test again. Okay, let's do the test. And four studs in. In the workshop, I ended this three. I start four in. Because when you put all six in and tighten them up, it could easily you know, tighten things up inside there and the two half shafts will work together and that's not what you want. So I'm turning towards the front of the tractor so this rod should fall down if the chimney is done right. That, that, that's good. Yeah, so that's good. It should turn the opposite direction. And that means those half shafts aren't putting I don't expect it to lift that up completely because it's heavy, but once it's not turned in the same direction, we are, we're good, we're golden. So what I could do now is, I'm happy I went for a 12 cow. I have gaskets here, and I measure them with a vernier caliper. And they're kind of coming in there, believe it or not, at about 20 tau. They do squash. And I have slim little gaskets I made as well. But to be honest with you, I don't see the point of having a gasket one side of this back in place, where it meets here, and not having the other side, when all that should be in there is grease. So that's why... When I clean off the gasket, I don't put them back on because I don't. I think you can buy them, but you don't need them. And I don't like gaskets because they squash. So you could have your end float there shimmed up right, and you put on your gasket. And what happens? You're tightening away, thinking you're doing a mighty job. And next week, your two half shafts are buttoned, and. You end up down, down the road with something similar to what happened with 35X when I got when I took it apart. And that is over here for people who didn't watch the 35X series and you check my playlists. End up with something like that. That's not mighty. The end of these half shafts, both ends looked perfectly machined. Basically, the way they left the factory. Right, we're going to tighten these up. And we're going to do that test again when they're tight and snug. So, put the breaker bar on this. 
um, just to make sure it's I prefer just to have shims in there because shims just will not compress as much as a gasket. So. If all is good in the hood, do that test. Everything will be exactly as it was. But when you only put three of them in, you are increasing the chance that it could come tight in a bit more and then you have to pull the hole out. Yeah, that's why I was throwing it. Sometimes, remember, trying to fine tune it through in all six. This was very well shinned, it just didn't take out them gaskets and they ripped and they cleaned them out with your wire brush and your drill. There's no choice to do that anyway. If you don't go and place them in these gaskets, just put in the shin. Okay, so I'm going to quickly put the breaker bar on that, tighten them up to spec, and uh, we'll do that test again. Okay, let's do the test again. <coughs> it's always, the, always a good idea, just in case things are things tightened up a bit. That end bolt is not much of a show. Okay, so I'll turn it towards the front of the tractor and that rod should fall towards the ground if everything's good. too heavy. That's what you'll get. Because it's obviously not in gear, it's just half shaft rubbing. The half shaft rubbing will go the same direction. So it's trying to go the opposite direction. It's trying to go down there. Yeah. So that's that's good enough. Once they're not turned in the same direction. Okay. That's what we feel like the pressure was there at all. I believe that was good. So that is good used. Okay, so the next job that I won't have to do apart from putting in that brake on is I've ordered two of these brake adjuster backing plates because it's got the bottom piece there. It's meant to have the top piece broke off up there. So I've ordered two of them because the one has gone on the other side and I'm not happy with those brakes. I've adjusted right off and they're still fairly stiff to turn so I'm going to have to, when I took the wheel off, um, I'm going to have another look in there. I'm going to replace these on both sides. I thought these were a different part but now I realise they're not. It's been a while since I looked in there. I usually do have to replace these. What happens is, People adjust their brakes, turning that brass 1116 square head there. Turns this and they overdo it or whatever without loosening this. This is on a slot, it can go up and go down and that's meant to be loose to allow the adjuster to move with the pads, the brake shoes, to find centre. Center. So usually to adjust brakes, was you, you, you get the, the, the shoes to come out top and bottom, push down against the drum and this has to be loose to allow that adjuster to move up a few mil or down a few mil and when you lock them on solid you then tighten this and that will basically allow that to sit in the center when you don't do that because of the, this is a lead and shoe system and all of that when you put on the brakes because of the one spring on top is stronger than the bottom i think the top one that's working first and then the, per, the, the force that that's kind of exerted on that it'll push the bottom one then down working from here so that puts an awful lot of pressure on this if it's not in the right place and it'll literally break that off now i think the other side actually has both sides gone both them little tangs gone i thought it was to be honest with you i thought it was a more newer after park aftermarket part that i hadn't seen before and i didn't actually uh, you think it needed replacing it's only that triangular bit but now looking at this side yeah, it needs to be replaced. So that's, they're going to go in. Um, I'm happy with the shimming, so I can just go ahead here now and put in the brake rod, um, hitch up the, the narrow rod, this rod here. Um, yeah, I can do that, but I just said I'd mention that. And I'm not happy with the other side. I think what happened was when I adjusted it, 
the brakes. It just couldn't centralize itself because the, that has gone. So we'll see when that comes, is any better. I would like it to be better. I'm not particularly happy with it. So to push against the spring here, and it could be a little bit. Probably still should have pushed this into bloody place. Should have pushed that into place. We <coughs> should have coincided with the grating. Pull against the spring there. A bit more even. I'd have to play around there and get that spring forward. Okay, one thing I can do is wait for the part to come is to get this part off. So, 11 16 I think, is it? 11 16 on the outside, anyway. And that said, 11 16 is going to slip on it, so we have to get 17, I'd say. And I can put any. I can put a better bolt in there if I have to. I mean, what's it looking like on the inside there? Five eighths. That's the next size down, so it's probably half to be, isn't it? Okay, so we'll try and tap on a 17 because it's fairly corroded on the back. I've tapped on no bother at all, so we could even need to go down to a 16. Yeah. Okay, I'll try uh, tapping on the 5 eighths, but I'd say a 16 would be the fucking need. Try 5 eighths. Maybe they are 5 eighths. That feels. That's like I thought the Ferguson Spanner realistically would be able to. Uh, be used for this, and there's no five eighths on the Ferguson Spanner, so yeah, okay. So, is it 11 16th? No, maybe it is five eighths. Okay, so that's the part there. So we have to tap out him, he's on a square lad there. He's a little square lad machine into him, so that's the bad part. Lovely, so we can just put that back in. We have that much done, I might go and take off the brake drum on the other side now since I have both wheels off the ground. Since I have both wheels off the tractor on the ground. So that's ready to go. There's a locating pin as well. So, five eighths it is. So we don't have that much space on the other side. The wheel there, I can move the wheel if I have to. So we've got our grub screws in there as well. So I'll just go and pull out them grub screws and uh, get, that, get that drum off. I did mention before that it's important to file a little bit off these. Most of these come a bit chamfered, but as we saw there, if you're watching from the start, the pad that was fitted was new, the, the whole shoe was new with the, 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 the whole shoe assembly and the, the actual shoe itself was brand new from the box, riveted on, and it had broke off more than halfway. So what I like to do just to be sure is I grab this kind of a file, it's for like very it's sharp teeth on it that way. Here. Just take the leading edge off, just take And that's a stop that happening and go a little bit there on each side. You want to just to slowly catch. That'll stop it, it's lifting it. So I had that done already, but 
I'm just going to do it again and make sure on every one of them. Any of the edges there that I could just catch, just take it off. See, the far side shouldn't be too bad apart from it could catch it if it's in full into reverse. You see, that's the problem. I'll have to do something with that work lamp and turn it off. Yeah, that's better. Just, especially when you're putting them on yourself because you could just end up not riveting down enough or riveting down too much and it starts lifting. So to help it just take plenty off because like there's loads of surface area there. So the last thing you want is what happened there or the last time they changed them. I wonder why your brakes are gone bad. Don't be frightened of taking a good lump of it off. Come up 10 mil or so. It's a lot better. And that's why we can see now that the duster is rattling around because that bracket is completely broke. I didn't even think. I know that's most likely down to that uh, adjuster there. So all we'll have to do here is pull off the, this wheel is a little bit in the way of the camera anyway. We'll bring it around as much as we can anyway. Okay, so we'll pull that spring. So I'll get me a bit of loop for that. Probably just need to take out the adjuster here, that's all. Out with the spring. There we go. Two good screws came out easy. Off with that. Off with that. Okay. Give me our five eighths. Another five eighths, I'm going to leave it. Well, there we go. Never taken off of a plate, that's it. screw and there we go so that's two of them so that's that it's coming expensive little feckers apart half to say they're 25 euro i think the two of them so we'll put it back on keep it all in one place okay so that's ready for uh that's ready for uh, the parts. Lovely. Okay. Yeah, so I'm happy now with that. Feels lovely. Thank you. 
yeah. So we're ready for that. Um, and then hopefully there won't be high spots and stuff on that. It'll centralise a little bit better. 